Hello and welcome to Endless Turns 2, the greatest 4x game that we can never finish. Now, I've decided to make this guide to help some people get through some of the early game. Now, early game is very interesting as it impacts basically everything they're going to be doing for the rest of the game. And if you have a bad early game, you're going to have a bad mid game and a bad late game, and it's not going to be fun to play. Which is an issue that I've seen a lot of people have, is they don't know what they're doing, they get stuck in these games, and then they just want to leave halfway through. And I completely understand, it makes perfect sense. Now, in order to show you some basic uh, tutorial stuff, um, I'm going to be playing the United Empire. They're a pretty good empire. Um, the Empire needs you. Yeah, the Empire needs you. Now, they have some pretty good stuff. Um, one of the main things I'm going to be showing is different configurations with ships, um, some of the early game stuff that you can do, uh, depending on which planet you have as your starting planet, uh, and just general early game tips that can help you proceed into a good mid game. So let's get right into it. Now, although the United Empire are a pretty normie faction, um, a lot of the other factions do use a lot of the same stuff that the United Empire does. Uh, even though they do have sort of asymmetric styles, most of the stuff that you can do with the United Empire, you can do with other factions. Um, some to a greater extent and some to a lesser extent. Uh, the United Empire ship designs are very versatile. Um, other factions are more so, some are less so. Uh, now one issue with that is, depending on which faction you're playing, um, you're not going to be able to do some of the same stuff that I'm doing here. However, I might make more videos in order to show how to do stuff on specific factions. So, first off, looks like we started in Spiral 2. Now, depending on which galaxy type you start in, that also changes where your location is. So, in general, on the map, anywhere where there's more dense cloud, like this, is where you're going to find your systems. Now, most systems are connected. We are playing on... Uh, the second option with uh, uh, the node connectivity, where some systems are going to be connected. You might have some people connected, but everything's not going to be com completely connected. Uh, a few things to know right off the bat um, is some of the menus at the top here. Uh, most people seem to think that they need to pick a law right away. You don't really need to. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. Um, but what you really want to focus on early game is what planets you have. Now, we have actually a pretty good start here. Having a a Terran planet, as your start, is pretty lucky. Um, having other systems you can colonize early on are really important. Now typically, I like to start with drone networks first, and then go right into Xeno Industrial. Now if you don't know how to research, it's here. Xeno Industrial is right here. You want to be getting this first every time. Now because United Empire start with it, um, we, don't have to, we don't have to worry about that right now. Um, so, what you should first do is look at your star system. We just have one option, which is, it makes things much easier. Might as well send your settler down there and see what's up. Uh, first thing you want to do is I like to create a fleet on here, which is uh, F6, or click the button here and assign him. Then you merge the fleets. And then I like to usually uh, give him some stuff so that he can do some good exploring early on. Usually maxing him out on probes with whatever dust you have is good. So that took 90 dust, which I started with 100. So you have just enough. So in this way, you can uh, not only get more curiosities early on, you're also leveling up your hero by having him assigned to the ship. And because there's just one lane, you can just send him down afterwards. Normally, if there are multiple lanes, you'd want to send ships in uh, different lanes. Uh, next, of course, before you end your turn, is picking the science. Um, because we do start with the best tech, xenolinguistics, we can get something else. Um, we also start with off-world agribusiness. These are basically the two basic techs that most factions are going to want to start out with. Either this one or this one, depending on what they, they start with. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Steps. So we're going to be going to get steps as soon as possible. Now, steps, I believe, is right here. So, let's go for xenobiology. Getting that science building later is going to be important. So... Let's see. Another thing to check is how content your people are, because you only have three citizens on the start. Most factions, if they have access to it, they can pass exam cram act and exactly have no negative. So you're getting about nine bonus science from that right off the bat. And that's pretty much turn one. It's Turn one should be fairly simple. You don't need to worry about any of the other menus. You should just be doing that. One thing you should know is when the turn kicks over, 
this button right here is very important. This will send your fleets down. It will it will commit their actions for you to for you to choose from. Now, pretty much, turn two is just moving your stuff around. That should be it. End your turn. Should be very quick. Early turn, the first turn should be much longer, and then after that, there's really not too much you can do. Now, this is pretty cool. We just found our first little guy here. Uh, because you're playing at, with a faction that has a lot of influence, I like to go ahead and give them a praise right away. And send our fleet down. See if that's what we find. And now this is the thing that gets people confused, is when this hacking pops up. Most people like to ignore hacking. You should not ignore hacking. Hacking is very important for endless space. Now, in order to open your hacking console, you can press space. And don't be intimidated by this. It is very simple. There's a lot of extra information that's shown here. You don't need to know any of it. All you need to know is this button. This is hacking mode. You click on a node to start from. You can start nodes from systems that you own, which is Kuma. We own the system. You can start a hacking operation from here. You can start it from other systems you own, or if you have a back door, which you will see later. So that's, that's as simple as it is. Now you're hacking. It's going to take five turns for the hack to go. Now there are also other actions you could take here as well. These are defensive programs and offensive programs. You do not start with any offensive programs. It will depend on which faction you play as. Basically, all you need to know is you put an encryption on important systems. I like to put one on my capital right away. So that makes any hacking attempt on you take 50% longer, which can be annoying for some people, which also allows your uh, node to detect other hacks. Um, so let's keep going. going keep going ah oh, man let's see what we have here damn so this is a pretty bad system especially if you're a normal empire that likes more temperate stuff the problem is is that desert and lava and gas are all texts that are very far down so desert is here or desert is down here i mean so it's three texts down lava is right over here so it's three texts down it's just really bad really bad ash is pretty much the only thing here that's useful early on and we still have to get a tech to research it so that's not a really a good system you want to be you want to find early on. Of course, it can depend on which faction you are. The Rithborn would love that system. And here we go, the faction chat quest. Now every different uh, faction has different quests, which is what really changes a lot of the gameplay for different factions. Because some factions have really important quests, others don't. Um, I think the United Empire uh, tech is pretty good. Um, Forty percent food. This is the one you want. Uh, Punisher drives. This gives 10% bonus damage on your ships, which is very useful. The other ones don't really do all that much. Trader's Reach is more of a burden to have, and eh, it's not too important. Here we go. And now you can research some curiosities. Again, this system is mostly uh, desert ash. Eh, it's okay. Arid planets are alright. So now, that because we have our hero here on this fleet, um, we can get him bonus experience early on. Now, this hero is really good as a governor. So we can give him... Yeah, this one's probably going to be useful. All right. Now our tech is done. Let's pick a new tech. We want steps as soon as possible. Getting as many planets colonized early on is extremely important. And let me explain why. It is because of this building. Now, if you notice, it has three effects. Plus 10 per fertile, plus 10 per planet, and plus 10 per temperate. What these keywords mean, you can see here, fertile and temperate. So that means that this, once we build this, it's going to be giving us plus 10 for fertile, plus 10 for the planet, and plus 10 for temperate, which means this building is giving us 30 industry. This planet Rhea is one of the best starting planets for this building depending on your race it can be better it can be worse but it's still good to have it and what this means is because you're getting plus 10 per planet and plus 10 depending on its other stuff once we colonize this Terran which is also fertile and temperate we'll be getting an additional 30 industry which is really important early on which is why I'm going to be queuing up this right away even if you can't have systems even if you can't have uh, people on your planets, it's still worth it just to colonize them, just for this industry. So that is why getting these texts in the um, in the science and exploration tree is most important early on, which is a, a big issue that I see a lot of people having. Let's keep uh, exploring. That's 
pretty bad. Let's keep going. Let's see. Oh, another one. Wow, that's that's very interesting. I haven't seen. It's very rare to have this many minor factions right next to each other. That's bizarre. I haven't seen that in a, in a while. That's that's kind of annoying because we don't really have any good systems to colonize right next to us. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to hack and um, try and assimilate these guys, or maybe even go to war. That's one thing that happens. Every game has different. Um, here we go. So we're going to improve image. So th these are the different options. Um, create backdoor allows you to basically use that node to hack from, um, as if it was your own system. Improve image is minor faction specific. It allows you to improve your relations, which is what we're going to go with. Um, this guy doesn't have a suzerain, which is basically if another person was already more influential than you, um, you could steal some from them. Um, uncover secrets is just if you want to praise them and get more stuff hack economy is you just um, if you're already friends with them it would give you more stuff in return but improve image is what we're going to want right away um, and then we're just going to go ahead and hack them again let's keep going oh here we go we found a system we can colonize let's see lava lava arid terran oh that's pretty good we'll go ahead and colonize this right away um, different empires want to prioritize colonizations. Um, the United Empire are pretty expansionist, so you can pretty much go ahead and colonize anything you see. Um, having four planets or more is always ideal. Uh, right here, you have your different options for improving your outpost, which you can get to just by clicking on the system again. Um, you just want to go ahead and do this. It'll decrease the time by half. When you're colonizing, what you want to watch out for is that your main system is actually sending food to that colony, which is seen here. The system is diverting part of its growth. Um, what this means is that your system is not nearly growing as quickly as it would be normally, which can be a negative. So you can't have more than, depending on how much food you're getting, one or two colonies active, which is why it's important to colonize important ones first. But that's pretty much our only option right now, so we might as well go with it. Let's keep going, let's keep going. This turn should be fairly quickly. There's really all, not all that much to be doing here. Um, not much you can do. We're just waiting for stuff to, to go and waiting for our fleet to go. Now, if we had more star lanes, we would have more options. Okay, we got some good stuff. Folly. Luxuries. Yada yada. Extra vision. I'm just going to put a little in here. Um, this guy is going to be a governor, so I'm just putting him in uh, industry. I like to maximize industry early on, so uh, let's keep going. Oh, we have another system, Pictor. Damn. It's all right. There's a tundra here for us. At least we're getting uh, sp systems with four planets. Four planet systems are pretty much um, middle of the ground. It can be from one to six. Uh, six, of course, being the best, but uh, these ones are all right. It could be much worse. So let's see. What else do we have in our main system? Lava. All right. Well, because we have so much hot planets, I'm going to go ahead and start going for... Uh... Actually, you know what? What we want is because our starting system does have uh, Hyperium, and because we're going to be uh, starting to colonize that in a, bit, in a little bit, I'm going to be getting Plasma Metallurgy. This tech right here, uh, Interplanetary Transport, is especially good because it will allow you to get extra industry when you build it, depending on your citizens. So some, some uh, races will use it better than others. Let's keep going. And there we go, pirates. Now, if you didn't know this, pirates spawn around ten tur ten, uh, excuse me, turn 10 to turn 12. So it's turn 12. I think they can spawn a little bit later. I'm not sure. It's depending on your game type. Let's go keep going. Oh, we got the first 10 curiosities. Uh, let me talk about that real quick. Um, with the uh, wonders like that. So in the middle of your tech tree, this is where you can find it. Um, in the middle of each era of tech tree, you can find stuff. That's not stuff that you have to really research. In here, you can see these are the starting buildings you get. Um, these things are just unlocked by getting to the next tech tree. So for example, because we're in um, the second era here, um, 
we have access to these, but we can't actually use them because we don't have the behemoth tech. Um, as you can see, there's more over here, getting additional laws. Um, what's important over here, uh, here's one of the other wonders, be the first to possess 20 sources of improvements, but just buildings. Um, one really important thing with uh, this side, which is uh, economy and trade, is this right here, which is the basic system development, which you can see here under F3, the economy screen, um, which is this, the resource. Uh, no available system development projects. In order to get that, you have to unlock this tier. In order to unlock that, you need to have two techs um, from the previous tier. So it's one tech from here to unlock this, two techs here to unlock this, three techs here to unlock this, four techs here to unlock the final endless technologies. And that's the same for everything. Um, up here in the military tree, you can see unlocking the new trees unlocks better weapons. So just getting into the next tier is already giving you better weapons and more combat points. So it is important to be researching, even if you're not going to be getting something in the next tree, because it's you need to pay attention to what's on the inside. Like, for example, here's the Endless Research Park, one of the wonders you build. That's something that a lot of people don't, don't know about. Um, let's see here. All right, cool, cool. These guys are very happy. So let's go ahead and ha start hacking the next one because we can actually make friends with these guys now. Assist. Let's see, with a level five hero, well, that's quite annoying. We'll have to wait till our hero's level five. Getting two citizens. That's the one that we need for the quest. We'll have to wait till a guy's level five. He's level three. He should be there soon. And we might as well go ahead and pick a research here. I forgot. Uh, one thing to note, this baryonic shielding tech, this is very important. Not only does it un uh, unlock uh, more curiosity scanners, it gives you warp drive right here, which allows free movement. So normally, when you're traveling, you can only go along these star lanes. With free movement, you can go wherever you want. So sometimes there will be star lanes that are, or star systems that are not connected by the star lanes. In order to find them, you'll have to shoot probes out in random directions. So for example, let's do one right now. So usually there's gonna be more stuff uh, along the belts right here and up here. So let's go ahead and shoot a probe and see what we can find over that way. Let's see if there's anything over on either side of us. Sometimes there will be, sometimes there won't. It really depends on the map, um, but that's a good tech. Uh, because we're pretty connected, we don't need it right now, but it's something to be aware of. We have a lot of arids, so I'm going to go ahead and go for this one. Alright, here we go. Oh, and there's a pirate. There we go. Now we can start colonizing this guy, and then we can start working towards lava. Mutated flora, huh? Alright. This one right here is very similar to the uh, Xeno Industrial Complex. Um, it gives 10 science per planet, per temperate, and per fertile, which is exactly the same as how that one works. So getting this tech will give you a huge science boon. Um, I usually like to, uh, it's, it's really useless to research uh, technologies when you're not building them. So I usually like to prioritize industry early on. Barely made it. Let's keep going. That was quick. Now that's because we're getting a lot of science from these minor factions, actually. Which is why it's really good to befriend them. Oh, excellent. We can search this with titanium. Oh, Sahar. So this is actually a unique planet. Unique planets will have a, a little circle around it. Let's see if there's anything good here. Now the faction, uh, the quest to assimilate these guys is to search that. So I'm going to go ahead and prioritize that. Getting this additional colony early on is important, especially when we don't have extra stuff to research. So I'm going to go ahead and go for atmospheric filtration because we have um, some ash planets and there's a lava here that I do want to be getting.
All right, let's see. Should take some titanium. And there we go, we got it. All right, so now that you've assimilated, uh, or not that I have, <laughs> now that I've assimilated these guys, um, let's take a look at their system. It's pretty good. Let's go ahead and build these up here real quick. Put in some cues, and that should be good for now. Now, we have these shuttles here. Now, they're all right. Minor faction ships are all right. Um, they're useful early on for dealing with pirates, so we're going to send them over here to blockade this system right away. Now, it's important to get a ship sitting on the pirates as soon as possible, because every single time um, they spawn a new fleet, which is in six turns, as you can see here, the level of defense that the pirate fortress has will go up. So I believe it starts at 250, then it goes up to 300, then it goes up to 450 or something. But having a fleet blockaded here, when it increases, it will stay at this current amount, which is important. Let's get this guy a level. Pirate fleets are actually very weak early on. There's only about one or two ships. So there's hacking trying to spam us again. Uh, one, another thing you can do to hack is you just hack the uh, pirates. I'm gonna go ahead and put an encryption on here. Um, pirate, hacking the pirates allows you to steal some of their resources, which is fairly useful. There we go, colony. There we go, faction quest. Hmm, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and go for Hadari Lenko. Again, I'm prioritizing drone networks, Xeno Industrial, and then we're going to start colonizing. And let's go ahead and go for Lava right here so we can finish up. Oh, we need to get one more. Let's get... Multi-thread management is pretty good. It gives you a lot of dust early on. And we have this system here that we can colonize. The Ash. Let's go ahead and go for it. Now, here's where things get interesting. Ship designs. So there's a reason I didn't touch on this yet, because it can get a little overwhelming early on, and it's not necessary, always. So first thing to look at is the Settler. Now, the United Empire Settler is quite unique, because it actually has access to a weapon slot. Some races do have this, but usually you're, usually you're not going to want that. What you're really going to want is just to maximize the speed on this thing. So that's all right. Then we can have a look at our patrol, which is our scout ship. Um, Early on, there are, there are a few different strategies you could go for. One of the, the easiest ones is just to go for missiles. Um, what you need to pay attention to is um, the battle tactics. Uh, now, missiles want to be at long range. There aren't too many good long range battle tactics early on besides power to shields. Um, middle range and close range uh, strategies have more options. So one of the ones that I like to go um, is take trophies, which you start with. We did get science from scrap, but you won't always have this. I got this from a curiosity. So I'm going to go ahead and put take trophies uh, right here. Um, that's a pretty good one. Um, lasers are pretty good early on. You can take advantage of the uh, extra science and uh, dust you get from take trophies, which is really good at improving your early game. So I'm going to go ahead and put some lasers on this guy. And give him a defensive module here. Now we can go ahead and build our settler. Drag him to the top of the queue, and let's go. This is an academy quest. Um, usually you're going to go for the uh, scavenge ramp scoop because it gives you extra movement, which is very important early on. Let's keep going. Here we go. We have our election. Usually you're going to go with uh, whatever party you start with. Um, for the United Empire, Industrialist is always always the best, pretty much. Go for this one. Now let's check our laws here. How are our people doing? They're content. We can probably uh, abolish this law and go for New Colony. This one's usually pretty good. Allowing you to get better colonies. We rise. Oh, and here we found our other guy, the Nakalim, the new faction. 
It looks like there's gonna be another minor faction over there. That's quite interesting. Okay, now that we've unlocked this, I'm gonna go for a magma here, the magma planets. You can see that we've unlocked this. Um, this is very important early on. Getting this as soon as possible can be game changing. Some of the stuff that these give you is insane. 60 food, 60 industry. Um, this one gives extra dust. This one gives extra science. This one gives extra influence. Um, these, these ones are insane. Um, you usually want to go for the one that you have more of. Um, but industry here is so good that I'm going to go ahead and take industry, even though we have one more of these per turn. And as soon as you get this, you're going to want to build this in your capital. You can build it right away. All it takes is one turn. It's extremely, extremely important to get those as soon as you can. All right, there we go. We found them. Let's go ahead and phrase them up a little bit because we have so much influence, which is one of the great things about the United Empire. And let's go ahead and start the colony here on this ash planet. It's not ideal, but we will make it work. And up here, we have an arid planet we can colonize and Sahar. So we're going to go ahead and rush out some more settler ships now colonizing early on especially as united empire is extremely important if you can afford it you're going to want to be colonizing and we've hacked the pirates so i'm going to go ahead and hack their auto droids which is going to give us looks like they have some titanium and we have pirates here so we're going to go ahead and fight the pirates now um because we chose take trophies uh these guys are okay at medium to short range so we're going to go ahead and go with this um, we're going to gain, there you go, 30 dust and 10 science. Now, early on, it doesn't seem like much, but it, if you keep attacking pirates and if you're a more militaristic faction early on and you're fighting many things, all these little numbers add up to a great number. And even, even putting yourself one turn ahead could be one turn to get um, a wonder. And hacking, let's keep going. Excellent. Go ahead and send them up here. And now we finally discovered a split star lane. Send a fleet to the quest marker, huh? We'll go ahead and see what's over there. And here you go, you can see. The, uh, the defense on this uh, pirate fleet has gone up to 450. But because we've had our fleet here, it's it's it wasn't able to increase. Um, so you definitely want to have at least one scout ship, or if you've assimilated some guys hanging out here, it will definitely help you. We've gotten pretty lucky so far with our system layout. Now, it will not always be like this. Some games will be more difficult than others, which is part of the challenge and part of the fun. So we finished building. All right. One thing to note is these options. These options, there are many of them. Oh. Go ahead and fight that real quick. There you go, another 10 science. Um, these options will actually give you bonus uh, science uh, on your population. Um, there are other texts like this in the game. Uh, let's see if I can find one. Here's one right here. This one gives you extra food for population. So some of these can be more important than others. Um, let's see, I think there's one for industry. Yeah, this one right here for industry. These are industrial zones. These ones are much better. Um, We'll go ahead and build this for extra dust for now. Let's keep going. Yeah, don't worry about the AI. They're going to get a lot of this stuff, especially on the endless AI. They're going to be getting a lot of these. There we go. Pirates. All right. So this may have been a mistake. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is our ship? Short and short. Short and short. Well, let's see what we can do here. We might lose this. Yeah, it looks like we have grave defeat. It's all right. It's all right. We can go ahead and colonize this. Speed it up. And let's check and see how we are doing on food. We're still making food, so we can still do a few more.
Now, if your hero does die, it's not the end of the world. He's right here. Just wait a couple turns, and you should be able to buy him out soon. It's quite your expensive Majesty right now. Alright, you can fuck off. So, let's keep going. New research. Now, I want to give a few more tips about research before I end the game. Um, now, a few good things to go for early on is you want to look at what your capital is doing. See, I don't have too many things left to build. Now, if you don't have anything to build, you should not just say, oh, let's just get the endless research park. This is not always optimal, especially for a United Empire fleet, which wants to be building stuff. So right now, I'm actually going to switch to this right now and get as much industry as possible early on, which is most important in my opinion. Now, we don't need too many more colonization techs because it's going to take a little bit for these other systems to get going anyways. What we want to be doing right now is focus on getting the pirates out, which we already are doing. So we don't need to go for military right now. Two is getting more food in our capital system so we can populate these planets. And three, getting a behemoth, an economic behemoth, as soon as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for this and go for this right into a behemoth and then show you how behemoths work. I would rather send you Alright, Akalim, cool. And let's go ahead and colonize this. And we're gonna go for this one. This one has more luxuries. It's more important early on. Alright, let's see how our capital is doing on food. So we're actually losing food now, but it's alright because this system should be finished. Or maybe not. Eh, whatever. If it becomes an issue, you can switch which system is sending food. And we will hack out our droids again. And let me show you how to do that if I can remember. Yes, here we go. This will switch which uh, place it's getting its growth from. By default, it comes from your capital, because that's where you're making most of it. So if you just select, um, which system do we want it to come from? Probably Taurus would be fine. So let's take some food from Taurus. So if you select here, what you can see is if you go back to your capital, we're still actually losing food because we're sending one somewhere. The, the fleet's already left. But uh, once, once it should catch up, you shouldn't be losing nearly as much food. And now Taurus is diverting part of its growth now, and it's still growing. So you're good. All right, cool. Now we have behemoths. Let's take a look at them real quick. So there are three different types. You're gonna wanna usually ignore military and scientific behemoths. Uh, however, there are some strategies where I do use scientific behemoths first. However, economic behemoths are what you're gonna go with as soon as you can. So, oops. Wanna edit the economic behemoth. And what you're gonna wanna do is put these modules on it, the Grants Bureau. So while this is orbiting one of your friendly star systems, it's gonna be giving 10 to everything. That's what that uh, 10 with all the things down here means. That's 10 to every Fidzy, except for influence. So you can put three of them on here. Um, and I usually like to just put some guns on here and some uh, some weapons, just in case some pirate skid over here, you can deal with them. And you're gonna wanna build this as soon as you can. So it only takes three turns. Your first behemoth is incredibly cheap. So after I finish getting sustainable, I'm gonna go be going for that. Um, let's see, what else can we research? So we're actually going through this game quite quickly. This is a pretty uh, lucky start, actually. Um, so what would we need right now is, hmm, we'll go for baryonic shielding. Um, let's see if there's anything else I can remember to talk about. Um, I'll just go through some screens real quick. Uh, this is obviously the systems that you have. The victory screen is where you can see your ranks here. That's the academy being found. Right here, important, uh, empire approval. Make sure you stay content. Um, staying below this cap is important for some races. Other races have ways to get around it. Um, one thing to note here, um, I'll talk about the governments. Now, switching governments is something you want to do rarely, but it can be very powerful depending on which race you do. For example, for United Empire, I like to stay as Federation all game because their Federation is actually better than every other Federation. Um, we'll go to the population. So right here is another thing that's very important. If you didn't know, you can actually give a bonus to your citizens, which will not only favor this population from boosted, it will also increase their boost. So by default, if you check... Um, 
what the United Empire citizens give. They're giving plus one influence. So once we go to the population details here and boost this, which it does take a uh, luxury. If we check here, now they're giving two. As you can see, this population's growth is being affected by a booster. And you can do this to any population you have. That would be very useful in case you wanted to boost um, another population that you randomly got, or if you wanted to boost one of your important populations, it can really increase your boosting. One of, one of the main ones used that on is the Vadiani. They have a really nice one. Um, there's not too much other stuff here that's useful. I'm just looking at laws. It, it can get very in-depth with laws. Some laws are better than others. Um, technology, right here, this number is how much uh, science you're getting. Um, these are your fleets. One thing to notice, of course, I've already done this once, is the battle tactics, switching your battle tactics. Um, early game battle tactics are actually much worse. They were nerfed a few patches ago. Um, they added these two, the shield penetration and hull plating. But usually I like to go with this set early on and take advantage of take uh, take trophies, which is very, very useful. Um, another thing to note is this button, the manage button for your manpower. Um, just by clicking this button, you already increase 20% health on your infantry, which is very useful if you have bonus dust. Another thing to notice is uh, this tech up here, which unlocks uh, armored units. And then there's another one that unlocks air units. It's somewhere up here. Here it is, right here. Uh, attack aircraft. Um, these troops function sort of like a rock, paper, scissor. Armor is good against infantry. Infantry is good against air. Air is good against armor. What this means is that early on, if you want to get a very good bonus, you should switch your entire fleet to armor as soon as you can. Um, and then upgrade as much as you can. As you can see, 50% damage against infantry is really good. So basically, until you get planes, you should have 100% armor. This is just your heroes. Um, you can ignore Isander. Isander's really annoying. Don't worry about him. This option is just your quests. It's not too important. And of course, diplomacy. Of course, we haven't done all that you much yet. Are a pest. So yeah, you're we a pest know too. How to deal. Uh, anyways. I'm going to conclude this tutorial now. I don't want it to drag on. I've pretty much shown some good early game stuff. Um, of course, this game would go on. And this game, I've gotten incredibly lucky with how um, these systems are laid out and how, how many uh, minor factions that I could pacify were close to me. Of course, pacifying stuff as United Empire is incredibly easy compared to other nations. So that could have been an example of why playing United Empire has given me more success. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope this will help you. And... Um, I'm going to be making more of these, maybe for other factions, uh, and if I can remember, I'll go over anything new that might be useful for you. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and have a good day.